All right, so hey, my name is Mike and I play board games. Um, if you're watching this and if you've tuned into my YouTube channel, you will realize that this is the first ever video that I will have posted to my YouTube channel. Um, basically, uh, I've been playing board games for, I don't know, probably deep into board games, probably like four years. I got into uh, the D-Day series um, when I watched the video on uh, somebody playing Omaha and uh, was able to purchase Omaha and Tarawa. And then uh, last year at uh, uh, BGG Con in November uh, here in Dallas, uh, I was able to pick up uh, the other two in the series, uh, Peleliu and then the newly released Iwo Jima. So I uh, played Peleliu, enjoyed it. Uh, I've played the other two, probably probably played Omaha maybe eight, ten times, played Tarawa probably three, four times. Enjoy them immensely. Um, something about these games, I'm not really a war gamer, uh, right? So uh, I like the solo uh, play. I like the, the way the games uh, come out. I love the card system. I've got uh, Conflict of Heroes. It's okay, uh, but it's dicey, and I'm not really into dice. So uh, I really enjoy the D-Day series. Well, Obviously, I was excited about Iwo Jima and uh, popped it out and tried to learn it uh, back in December and had a lot of issues. As many people who have posted on BGG, um, there is a gentleman named Jeff Fike who uh, posted a series of videos, uh, the only other series out there on YouTube that I can find on Iwo Jima. And uh, uh, there are some issues with the rules. Uh, Jeff Yost, the creator of the game, uh, has promised uh, an updated rule set uh, for a couple of months. It hasn't come out yet. I'm assuming it will at some point. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, and uh, Jeff, if you are watching this, uh, you've created an immensely wonderful game. Um, has some issues, has some flaws, but uh, it is epic in, uh, in every sense of the word. And my intention here is to play a full command, uh, a full campaign uh, of Iwo Jima. Whether I make it that far, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I've got uh, uh, a lot of things uh, that might prevent me. Um, one of which is keeping this game out on my board for as long as it will take me. Uh, I have thought about it. I debated whether I was going to start this now, uh, but. Um, and ultimately, I thought, yeah, why not? Because worst comes to worst, what I can do is uh, kind of, you know, just go through and make notes on where things were, pack it up a week later, put it back down, put everything out. The only thing that will happen there is obviously, you know, these counters, uh, the unrevealed uh, Japanese units. I'm going to have to figure out a way to store those or something uh, where uh, I won't be able to see them. Okay. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I hope to be able to play this out. Uh, I hope to be able to um, make it enjoyable for the you know 15 people <laughs> that might watch it. Uh, but I thought I'd try. So um, I am uh, at home. Uh, I also work from home, so there may be distractions. Um, and uh, I don't plan on keeping it running when I need to look up a rule. I don't plan on keeping it running uh, when I need to obviously pause it for other reasons because there may be things that come up that I may need to pause it for. Uh, but uh, I also don't plan on editing this too much uh, to try to cut out some of the chaff. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, um, well, we'll see how it goes. Um, first of all, I went through uh, the rules and uh, went through them extensively and made myself some uh, cheat cards, basically, uh, from all of the different things that uh, may come up. I made a lot of cheat cards. I'm hoping to avoid having to go to this too often while I'm playing it. Um, I don't want to be flipping through this because it's not really well organized and sometimes I can't find the things I'm looking for. So I'm hoping that I know it well enough to where I can just refer to the cheat cards as necessary uh, and, and get everything played. My other thing, if you have noticed, uh, I have blinged out my board a little bit. For those of you who own the game, you know that it did not have fire dots on it. So I took some Sharpies and I drew my own. Um, I know 
you know, J Jeff, when he created the game, he moved instead of the fire docks, except for the uh, black positions, he moved to this field of fire uh, or this uh, um, um, line of sight rules. And I, I don't want to be referring back and forth to a book trying to figure out, am I getting that sight roll right? Am I getting that line of sight roll right? I, I, I don't want to do that. So I like the fire dot system. Uh, that was in the previous three games, and so I ran with that. And I decided one day, ah, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to put my own dots on there. So I blinged out my board. So hopefully that uh, will work. Now I will say there is one spot here. If you ever, uh, if we ever zoom in close enough, and you go, hey, wait a minute, these two spots here are intense fire dots for black. Well, they're really not. Uh, they are. Um, uh, steady fire but um i was reading somewhere and thought that they should be intense fire and then i read uh one of jeff's responses uh jeff yost's responses on bgg and he said that the black dots are correct on the board and so i had already colored these in uh, and uh, tried to rub rubbed the black off and was semi-successful uh, but anyway these are steady fire not intense fire it seems like they should be intense fire but i'm going with what jeff said so um, the other thing is there is actually a position way up here that is black that for some reason didn't have any dots uh, on the board and so i went ahead and put them in as that are they are on the uh, setup sheet so and that's the other thing is that uh, now that I've set up, I hope to not to have to refer to this monster uh, anymore throughout the game. So um, that is my goal, that I don't have to refer to this at all since it's all set up and that I have to refer to this as little as humanly possible. We'll see how it works. All right, so that said, let's get rolling. I've set up my uh, landing uh, my landing parties and uh, we're ready to land so um, first things first we do a landing check we are in the amphibious phase so we, we go stack by stack uh, for each regimen and then every stack up to four of other units uh, so we're gonna start on the left here now uh, if you've watched uh, Jeff Fike's video uh, on this he was very scared of this spot right here because it's intense fire not only from black but other units, um, other other areas. Oh, uh, I did forget one thing which I will do right now. Um, I'm scared of it too. I don't know whether I'm going to handle it the same way he did. He basically kept a lot of units in the water and they kept taking fire in the water uh, and, then, and then blew them in. I might just overstack this spot right here, especially if uh, yellow gets disrupted at first, uh, I may go ahead and just overstack this spot and just continue to move them off because I'm very scared of this spot as well. I don't want my units to get torn to shreds. So uh, let's see. First of all, the first thing I forgot to do uh, after I set this up is to disrupt uh, Japanese units. So uh, we are going to flip this card and see that we've got red and purple and brown that are disrupted. So let me go through, grab my little cup o disruption markers for the Japanese and start doing that. All right, so I've got red here is disrupted. I've got purple here is disrupted. Uh, I was hoping that green or yellow would be disrupted, but they're not. So this is gonna be a hard place to land. Uh, purple over here is disrupted. So the people coming in the middle aren't gonna have too much of a problem, but they've got one more step to go to try to get those guys. So uh, chances are those will become undisrupted by the time uh, we get to them. All right, so let's see, we got purple over here. Um, and I think that's it for now. Brown's up there, I'm not too worried about that. Is this a brown? That's a brown. All right, so that's disrupted. So wow, this whole middle section right here, these guys are just gonna land without any issue. Um, backing up a quick sec, uh, I, I will say this, I will put a caveat out here. I'm gonna make mistakes. I guarantee you that. There's no way to play an epic game like this and not make mistakes with the amount of rules 
that are in this thing and the conditions on moving conditions on on everything i'm going to screw up muff fire i'm going to screw up uh fort placement i'm going to screw up some things i'm going to try to get most of it right as much as possible but i will mess up it's okay comment if you want to uh on the things that i mess up and i will go oops you're right shoot oh well uh, but, uh, you know, the goal of this game is, you know, you're going to get torn up anyway. You're going to be moving methodically. You're going to be trying to, you know, strategize on how to take out, uh, positions. You're going to do the best you can. And I'm going to mess up some, uh, some of it will be in my favor. Some of it will probably be in the Japanese favor. We'll see. But, uh, anyway, I just want to throw that out there because I'm not perfect at this. I, I'm not an experienced war gamer. Uh, I've played the, um, the again, I think I said earlier, I, I played I've played Omaha probably ten times. Uh, you know, I've played uh, the other titles, you know, a handful of times. So you know, I'm still learning on how to on the strategy of this. So anyway, just wanted to to throw that out there. All right, so the landing cars. We're going to start with this group here, and we've got a drift left, and it is a brown. So we do have a brown field of fire. Um, oh, there's brown. I forgot to disrupt that brown. So, uh, we do have a brown field of fire, uh, but it's disrupted, so they shouldn't take a hit. If I land here, um, you know what? Black is going to hit anyone regardless on that landing check. Let me double check that rule. I'll be right back. All right, so remember how I said I wasn't going to. I was going to try to refer to this book as uh, little as humanly possible. Well, I've already referred to it. I uh, can't find anything on the black condition, the black uh, positions. Um, and so, yeah, they've got to hit. They have to because they're black. They fire all the time. And they're not disrupted, so they're going to hit. Uh, the symbol we have is a circle, and we also have a drift left. And uh, uh, the drift conditions on the landing only happen from game turns 1 through game turn 6 on... Uh, it was Feb yeah, February 19th, so uh, we are going to drift the one we hit to the left. So I've got my handy cup full of step losses. I will grab a step loss, and we have our first hit of the game. I will put it on the circle, and we'll drift him. Uh, we cannot drift left, so I believe it says if you can't drift left, then you have to drift right. So I'm going to drift this guy, boom, right there. Uh, and because he drifted, and that is his unit, I'm going to go ahead and stack these guys here. Alright, so that is the first landing. Now, uh, the next group, uh, we have a brown again, and we have another drift left. Great. So, uh, we are going to hit the triangle unit because of the black position. So, jump into my step loss. I'll grab a step loss for that. I hope you can see this okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on where I'm messing around here. Whoop, I almost lost my tripod. Alright, so uh, we have drift left brown. We took our step loss on the diamond and instead of drifting left he's going to drift right so he's going to jump right where this guy landed actually you know what uh, i hate to put him so far away but i need some full strength guys here to nail this guy when i come in so yeah i'm just going to put him here because i'm probably going to end up disrupting him anyway to land the other ones so I may rethink that. All right, let me put this down and adjust. There we go. This tripod's a little wonky, uh, so hopefully it works okay. All right, so that was that unit. And then the rest of these guys come in. They're gonna land here. I'm gonna deal with the disruption later. Uh, I just wanna get all these guys on the beach first. All right, so now we have this group here. And we have a green, no drift. Uh, we, do, we have green. Boom. All right. Great. Uh, so we take a hit to our diamond units. That's this guy. So he's going to take a hit. And... 
step loss. Not sure how I feel about these step loss counters. Uh, I know it's been debated. Uh, I know uh, the other Jeff uh, Fike has mentioned uh, his thoughts on them. I'm not sure. Um, you know, it makes stacks pretty big. You got to make sure you keep the right step loss with the right unit. Uh, but I do like the randomness of what they're left with, so that uh, your unit, you know, every time you play, when it gets hit, it's going to have uh, it's going to have a different. Let me see if I can get that to focus. It's going to have a different set of uh, weapons left over. So that's that's pretty cool. All right. So what is this guy going to do? Well, he's going to. Hmm, yeah, he's going to come here, and he's going to be disrupted on top of these guys. We'll let our wounded guys be a little disrupted. The rest of these guys are going to come in. So, let's see. I'm going to put HQ with that guy. I'm going to put these guys here. And then I'm going to land these guys, and I think I'm going to put them right there. All right. Now, on the landing, I guess the, I don't know if the tank can get hit, now that I think about it. See, here I go, checking rules again. All right, I'll be back. Yeah, so that's second pass. All right, so only star units can't get hit. So that means that tanks and engineers are both susceptible to uh, fire upon landing. So. Let's hope, I mean, the engineer is one thing, but let's hope our tank doesn't get popped. All right, so let's see what we got. Two. All right, we have a yellow circle, so the engineer could get hit. Uh, in fact, yellow does hit the engineer. Boom. Engineer flips. Tank is good. Land these folks right here. All right, moving on down the line. Let's see what we got here. All right, so this group's got a lot of room to land, so we can go ahead and easily split them up when they land. Uh, we have, oh, by the by, uh, this last one, we did have a drift right. Um, I believe the engineer is going to be affected by that. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's unfortunate. I'll put our wounded engineer right there. Okay. So that was the last one. This one, we have a uh, green triangle. No green in this area. So we're good to go. So these guys can just pop in. Uh, let's see, we are going to put our HQ there. We'll put these guys here. And that's that. Now we have this stack, which lands in red too. And we have a red triangle, but red is disrupted. Sweet. All right, so uh, let's see. We want to try to start stacking our tanks. So I'm going to put this tank here with this group. I'm going to put the engineer over here to avoid any kind of disruption. So when I play, sometimes I try to go ahead and use these. To keep things, you know, I, I am a neat freak when it comes to uh, these war games. And so I've seen people use these and I thought, oh, I'm going to go buy me a pair. Uh, but sometimes it just gets so clogged in there that uh, um, it makes it even more difficult to use these. But my fat fingers will cause things to explode sometimes. So it's six of one half a dozen of the other. All right, moving on to the next... Uh, the next group we got green and drift right oh shoot uh, we had a drift left on this one see I'm already messing things up all right so when these guys came in uh, the triangle unit which is this guy drifted to the left so he goes here I'll figure out the disruption in a minute uh, who I want to disrupt there because this stack's already getting too big and I don't want this guy to be too far from his HQ because I'm going to try my hardest. I'm going to try my hardest to keep these battalion HQs with their battalions because um, 
when things go in, I know turns one through six, everyone's in command and that helps. Uh, but once turn seven comes around, I need to make sure they're close together so I can continue to use as, much, as many of my units as I possibly can. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so now we got a green and we got a drift right. There's no green, so sweet, but we got one of these dudes who's got the drift right and that is gonna be our circle unit. So he's gonna pop in over here. These guys I'm gonna go ahead and put here so that they can all stay together and hopefully take care of this brown. All right, these dudes. We got no drift and we got brown and there's no brown there. Sweet, okay, so. Uh, now we're going to have uh, some disruption going on. So since these guys are all with those guys and this guy's alone, uh, I could put one of the, I could put some of these on there, but somebody's going to get disrupted either way. So I'm going to go ahead and keep all these dudes together. I'm going to drop them all right there. All right. Now our tank and our engineer can come in on either one of these. Uh, I have to pick first. Let's see. Uh, I got an open spot right here. They could also stack with either of these. Uh, I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to keep them right because we want our fifth division to be going towards Sirabachi, and we want our fourth division to be going this way. So I think I'm going to stick them here. That way they're closer that way. So they're going to come in on yellow too. Plus there's fewer things that can hit them, and it doesn't matter because they got hit anyway. Um, so we got a drift left, so that's going to be our engineer, and we've got a triangle. Hey, we have no triangles. Sweet, so nobody got hit. All right, so this dude is going to come here. I'm just going to put him underneath there because I like my infantry on top. And I'm going to take my engineer and I'm going to stick him underneath these guys. All right, so that's that. We're almost done with the landing phase. Now we can get to the good stuff. All right, so the stack here. It's going to be a brown drift left. Now brown is disrupted. Uh, it's this guy that would be firing on them. So uh, they don't get hit. But I have a diamond unit that is going to drift. All this drifting is going to cause issues keeping these dudes together and undisrupted. Alright, so again I got another grouping landing here. So I'm going to have to disrupt some people anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that whole stack there uh, and disrupt one of them. And then this guy's going to drift over here. All right, now, this stack is pretty ugly right here. But I'm going to go ahead and put him underneath that stack anyway, and we'll just disrupt him. So again, I'm going to go back. I'm going to, undo, I'm going to do all the disruption after I do all the landing, figure out which units I want to be disrupted because they exceed stacking limits. All right, next group. Red, we have no red in here, and we have no drift. So these guys all come in. I'm just gonna keep them all stacked, and they're gonna drop right there. All right, and our last group here of tank and engineer comes in on blue one, and we have a blue diamond. Uh, and that tank is a diamond. Uh, we got no drift, but our tank unfortunately takes a hit, so we're gonna have to, I think it's turn two, we can use, uh, Replacement points. I'm gonna have to hopefully keep that tank alive and get some replacement points on them. So I'm gonna put those guys here. I'm gonna try to blast that blue unit out of the water. All right. So there's our first phase. All right. So next, we would have the event phase, but there is no event phase on game turn one. So we have our Japanese fire phase. Ugh, this is where it's gonna get dicey with some of these units. Um, Sorry, Chewbacca went off. That's my phone. I'll be back. Well, ended up being a good time to stop because my cat started scratching at the door too. And uh, cats and war games do not mix. All right, so let me make sure my view is where I want it to be. And let me back out just a little bit. And let's see what happens with the dreaded Japanese fire phase. All right. So, here we go, skadoosh, we got purple, we got blue, and we got green. Uh, purple is disrupted, but I do not think blue and green are, so we're going to take some hits. There's a triangle, we are in intense fire in all of these, so uh, we're going to take a few hits. Thankfully, 
at this point phase in the game, there's no depth. So one hit a piece. Um, those of you who are familiar with the D-Day games, the uh, the letter actions are not uh, active until game turn seven. Uh, it's another thing about the printing of the rules is uh, he had uh, um, stated on here that M was supposed to start on turn two, the stars were supposed to start on turn three, and the uh, R's were supposed to start on turn six. But in looking at the FAQ and uh, Jeff Yost's responses to questions, uh, there is a section in there that says letter actions do not start until turn seven, so we're not starting any on turn seven. Now here, I went ahead and marked turn seven here, but I think that the stars are gonna be all the time. So uh, I am gonna go ahead and if I draw a star, so be it, someone's gonna get hit. But as far as the letter actions, they're not gonna start until turn seven, and then the I action isn't gonna start until turn 22. So that said, we have uh, sorry distractions. Uh, we have purple, we have blue, we have green. So let's see what we got. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put that down here. And oh yeah, I was going to do my disruptions. Hold on, back up. All right, so here uh, we are just going to keep. We will, we will keep everything underneath this disrupted. All right, now, disruptions. There's this hole, and it seems like it'll be a good, um, a good deal, right? The whole front and back side of the disruption marker. My problem is just going to be keeping them straight. Which turn, you know, which turn is what? All right, so I got units disrupted on even turns or lighter side, units disrupted on, disrupted on odd turns or darker side. And then you flip them over on the even. So that means this is an odd turn, so these guys are gonna be, uh, that's a garrison marker. See, that's the thing I don't like either, is that you've got these disruption markers, which are light and dark, and these disruption markers, which are dark and garrison. Why? Why? I don't know. So I've got them separated because I don't want to be grabbing any garrison markers. All right, so we will grab our dark disruption marker, right, dark light, and we'll put that on everybody below them. All right, and then this stack here, same thing. Uh, let's see, we've got our HQ. Uh, we've got a 27 and we've got our step loss dudes and then yeah all three of those step loss dudes so the step loss dudes are going to be disrupted so that is a dark disruption over here we've got tanks and dudes uh, so one of these guys is going to have to be disrupted I'm going to make it the the loner from um, first battalion. So first battalion guy, I'll flip below everything else. We'll drop a disruption marker in between there, and we'll do that. This group here is good. This group here is good because engineers and tanks can stack. Um, in case you're watching this and you haven't read through the rules, basically the stacking rules, and I'm not doing this for a rules thing. I will explain some things, but I'm hoping that if you're watching this, you, you kind of know what's going on with these D-Day games. Um, but with this particular, uh, with, with, with Iwo Jima, which is different than uh, the other uh, D-Day games, is that you can exceed your stacking limits. But um, uh, anything that exceeds the two infantry stacking unit uh, limit becomes disrupted. So that's where you got these. I got one unit, I got two units, and everything below that is disrupted. The ones, um, you know, you can have up to two un undisrupted uh, units in a stack, uh, but everything else is going to be disrupted. Now, it does anything over 10 pips, I believe, uh, is makes it a concentrated target, uh, which puts it in intense fire. Well, they're in intense fire anyway. So, you know, what does it matter? But, you know, and this is the only time it's really going to be a big deal is on landing. Everything else, you can pretty much spread out and it's not going to be an issue. So, 
All right, so these guys are, see, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to end up knocking these things all over the place. All right, so we got this group here. Again, we got um, one extra unit there. Uh, they're all in uh, one. I want to hit, well, you know what? I could have landed this guy over here instead and not disrupted. So since that guy's disrupted and that guy is, that wouldn't be a bad idea. So I'm going to backtrack and do that. Yeah, there's going to be some backtracking. I'm, you know, sorry, not sorry. There will be times where I'm going to go, yeah, I should have done that. And I'm going to back up and do it because I'm the one playing this game, right? All right, so now we got this stack here and we got all kinds of crap here. So uh, we got the HQ2, uh, yeah, that whole grouping there. So we will just disrupt everything below the first two. And I know, you know, the other units are uh, higher strength than the HQ, uh, but I'm not going to need it for these first uh, units on the beach. They're going to be easily taken care of. We're going to start spreading out. And then there'll be some times that, you know, we'll need some more firepower and, you know, something needs to be disrupted. It might be the HQ, but um, probably not. All right, so here I got one extra unit uh, that needs to be disrupted. Everything else above it, the tank, the engineer uh, are fine. So take a disruption marker, slide it in there, drop stack back down. And then you got this stack here, which is a full four and nobody got hit. And so we're just gonna disrupt the bottom two there. Uh, again, an option is to leave some in the water. I just don't want them to continue to have chances of getting hit and I might as well get them on the beach and start moving them out because you got to move fast. Now I'm not going to do the scenario one uh, victory conditions. Basically I'm working scenario six, the entire, the whole shebang, right? So I'm not tremendously worried about having to take something in sector three uh, by the end of turn six. I'm going to try. I'm probably going to move over and hit that one that's disrupted right now, that, that uh, purple unit. Um, but you know, if I don't, I don't. It's not like I'm going to stop and say, oh, I failed, and so the whole game is over. I'm going to keep going. Because um, ultimately, what I want to do is I want to clear the whole board by turn 60, whatever it is, 64. We'll see. We will see. All right. So uh, that was um, my disruptions. And now back to the Japanese fire phase, which again was purple, blue, and green. So I'm gonna put this here in camera view and then I'll move it off after I'm done. All right, so moving left to right, starting with purple. Purple's disrupted. Don't have to do anything except remove disruption markers from purple. So there is one and there is one. And then way over off of this side, I'm not gonna move the camera, but there's one uh, way off to the right of the landing zones, all right? So that sucks. Uh, and then the good thing about um, the other, the, the red and the brown not coming up is that those units will remain disrupted. That's very important right here. Um, this, you know, Servachi is, is a heavy hitter. And so uh, it's gonna be pretty ugly uh, once these things start, you know, all of these things can fire on my guys. So the more I can keep them disrupted, the better. All right, so then we go to blue, and we got this blue here, and um, because I have my fire dots drawn in there, I know that no one is within the firing range of, oh, of blue. That guy's green, and so blue is fine there, and we keep moving along, and we've got this blue right here. So our symbol is a triangle, and so the... the um, the priority is obviously intense fire and then oops see i'm already dropping stuff all over the place uh intense fire and um and then it's going to be highest strength unit and unit with a symbol so since most of them are you know the same strength eight so i'm going to um take one with that symbol. All right, so that's gonna be this guy right here. The nice thing about that is I had already disrupted him. So he's gonna get hit, he's gonna get disrupted, but he's already disrupted. So unfortunately, he takes a step loss though. 
And so I'll put my step loss guys on the bottom. Again, I'm gonna do my best to try to keep these guys with their uh, with their HQs, but I will probably mess that up. All right, so that is blue, and there are no other blues. All right, so then we move to green. All right, and coming over here, we've got that green right there, that big bad green. That's gonna be our problem, the bane of our existence for a while as we try to get closer, inch closer to Suribachi. I'd like to take this dude out before turn seven when we can start marching on Suribachi because he's gonna be an issue if we can't. Now the nice thing is um, black does not uh, have a field of fire in here and if I can get a unit into that green space you can see they're all just steady and if I can take out uh, that blue and I can try to keep these guys disrupted uh, we should be fine so but that green is going to fire on the stack here and he's going to hit a triangle there's a triangle right there on the bottom so we'll give that dude a step loss whoops I hope I don't flip any of these on accident and end up messing myself up all right, so that guy takes a step loss, and that's it. Just one Japanese unit, one fire, one guy gets hit. Ah, see, look at that, I'm doing it again. All right, so that's green, and then we got a green over here. Uh, this dude is going to hit one of these two, who are both in green's field of fire. So uh, let's try to keep these guys fresh. Let's see. There is a triangle. So we'll hit that guy. All right. So that's it. That's the Japanese fire phase. No second event phase, so we move to the US active phase. All right, now's where it comes fun, becomes fun. Okay. So one of the things I know I'm gonna get wrong as this game goes on is the whole bluff movement. I'm gonna screw up. I'm going to end up moving the dude across the bluff and continuing on. Uh, we don't have to worry about that now, but, uh, you know, seeing this, I know that Terrace, which is the beach landing, and then this next section here uh, is all one movement, one movement point. Um, uh, you can only move one through the Terrace until turn seven, and then the bulldozers come in and they clear it so that you can move more. And then I think it's turn 10, they're cleared one step up. And so, um, you know, we'll get to there and our movement will be a little bit fixed. But for right now, uh, we got to worry about uh, only moving one at a time. All right. So one of the things that will happen, one of the things that uh, Jeff Fike unfortunately got wrong, or well, he got wrong for part of his videos. And then uh, he ended up fixing it and it was a bane to his existence basically is this whole idea of um let's see where it is um moving into uh unoccupied positions in communication you got to draw a card and if the position group entering is on the card then a unit from the reserves enters and conducts infiltration infiltration fire after that, I can decide to continue to enter and initiate close combat. That blows uh, because that's going to make it very difficult uh, to continue to, to hit these. Now, the, the bright side is there's only three units in the reserve uh, for section three uh, or section two. So hopefully uh, we can nail these guys knock them out and then there won't be any more reserves so let's go ahead and hit this guy with uh, let's hit him with the eight that should be plenty to knock him out and then we'll have the HQ try to infiltrate and get in there uh, without there being yeah there's no red field of fire that is a beautiful position because there's absolutely nothing that fires into there 
So if I can get in there and hold that position, then that starts to help me uh, in my spread. All right, so let's do that. The eight is attacking. So we've got, now one of the charts I will be referring to is our handy attack results chart. All right, so I'm hoping, well, I'm hoping for a three to one. Two to one, Japanese unit alone, he'll be disrupted. Uh, three to one, he'll be eliminated. So I do want a three to one. So scratch that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the full deal. Um, cause I need 11 in case for whatever stupid reason, that's a three. Now I don't think any of these initial units on the beach are threes, but I don't want to take the chance. Uh, and then, uh, I can mm, maybe move one of these guys in, but I really want to get these guys moving over to the green and try to attack him before he gets any kind of depth. Yeah, well, the letter actions aren't going to happen yet. So maybe I can just go ahead and attack them, and I'll try to move in next turn. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so that's 11 to attacking in, uh, and of course it's a 1. But it's close combat. Oh, perfect. Close combat. So I definitely have the 3 to 1. Um, and then I, I do like this. I, I will say I like this over the other... Uh, D-Day games. I mean, it's very. This chart is very easy to figure out, and it's got different results. And there are ways, even if you don't have um, the weapons, you can still knock a depth marker out. Um, you know, if you've got the strength. So I like that. I like that because sometimes you just overpower them, whether you have the weapons or not. Uh, you can you can still take things out. So I got eleven to one. So I'm definitely three to one. Uh, so we move over. It's alone, and actually. Uh, Japanese unit alone. Oh, if I don't have uh, the weapons, then I have to go down a notch. So that's where this happens. So I go down from three to one to two to one. He's alone. JD means J Japanese unit is disrupted. So I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. So that happens. And now I'm this guy. I'm the guy that does this. Things that have moved, I will... I will cock to one side so that I know I've already used them because I will forget which ones I use. Uh, and that's where this thing ends up coming in because I'll try to you know, usually use this to try to get them back in order because otherwise I'm going to knock things all to crap. All right, so that was that. Uh, this guy, now he's disrupted, so I don't believe I have to do the um, muff if he's disrupted. All right, moving from another uh, one field of fire to another. If another unit is adjacent, Muff is only one hex. One hex move does not trigger. Uh, that doesn't apply here. Um, black tanks. Right. I don't have anything that says anything about disruption, so. Um, yeah, resolve like normal fire. So I'm gonna say no. Yeah, if he's disrupted, then I don't have to worry about Muff. Um, if I got that wrong, Jeff Yost, I'm sorry, but unclear. All right, so that said, uh, he is, however, they are moving from here to here. So, see, and this is where there's so many rules, so many rules. Um, one hex movement does not trigger unless moving in field of fire of the same Japanese unit. So that said, I will, if these guys move to here, it's within the same field of fire of the same unit. A green dot there, a green dot there. So I'm moving within uh, that. And so I'm going to take movement under fire. So, but it's steady. Uh, so I have to get the color and the symbol. Oy. So I don't want to see green. And there's green. And it's a triangle. And there's a triangle. 
fantastic. Now, they don't get disrupted, but my poor little unit here does take a step loss because the Marines had it rough on Iwo Jima. All right, so that's that. These guys have taken their turn. Oh, move on. All right. Now, these guys, I want to march on my tanks. I don't think I'm going to move off the beach right now. The guy down there is disrupted. I'm going to drop this dude in here. We're going to surround that guy. And we're also going to, see, I'm knocking everything all over the place. And so those guys are moving up there. Let me back up just a little bit. All right, so my tank. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, Tank could barrage somebody, but I've already disrupted that guy. That guy's already disrupted. That guy's more than three three uh, places away. So my tank can't really do anything right now. And the other guy down there is disrupted. That's right. Alright. That tank can't do anything. I might move those tanks on top of each other. Oh, that tank could try to barrage that guy. So let me move these guys here. And I can barrage with this guy over there. Why don't we do that? Because barrage has different strengths to it. This would be a three barrage. He gets, or a four barrage. Now, uh, I think uh, the other Jeff Fike who was doing these videos was putting the, their barrage strength at a three. And reading something from Jeff Yost somewhere, Someone was asking a question about barrage and about combining tank barrage, and he said, yeah, you combine tank barrage, it's 4 plus 4, and that's why you have that, this 6 plus, because that's the only way you can get over 6 strength, because your naval uh, is a 6 strength, uh, your airstrike is a 5 strength, um, artillery you can use up to, I don't know, up, up to, I forget what that is right now, I'm not using artillery right now, anyway, I don't have it, but your tanks will be a, a, a strength of four. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and barrage with that dude over to there. So, I want to see a purple circle. And if not, then just a purple. I did not get purple, but I did get a circle. So, I got the barraging unit symbol. I am at four strength. So I disrupt one Japanese unit, and I have the option of hitting artillery. I didn't get a, uh, oh, you know what, I think, yeah, artillery, if I draw another card and the, I'll have to look that up <laughs> again, uh, I think if I draw another card and the landing color matches one of the colors on this, then I take out the artillery. I don't even know if this guy has artillery, so I might be just... Yeah, he doesn't have artillery, so I'm getting ahead of myself. But, good news is, that dude is disrupted. So he will not fire on me next turn. So that's nice. Alright, so that guy's been used. Alright, I'm going to have to pause for a second here, and I will be right back. It will be seamless to you, but for me, I'll be gone for a few minutes. I already caught it. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I can't barrage this guy. I can't do it because he's not revealed. Uh, so I'm taking that back. Uh, that never happened. Uh, sorry about that. So, however, um, one thing I am that bugs me uh, is on this chart here, right, you've got in certain places it says one of the results is artillery. Down here under results, it's got artillery. But this diamond is for when you use your artillery. If you get a diamond, then you get a hit with the artillery. But this is like combining that and when you use your own artillery. It needs to be separated. You need to say, this, this artillery, if I need to get a symbol for that, I need to know. 
it's a symbol, you know, diamond artillery destroyed Japanese artillery fire in the position. That tells me that I only want to fire on positions with artillery with a tank that has a diamond. Otherwise, I'm not going to get the result that I want. I mean, I could get a fire, you know, fire color only, you know, whatever, but I don't like this. So I'm going to interpret this as when I'm using my own artillery, I have to get a diamond in order for that artillery to hit. Just like I have to get a, a triangle for my naval gunfire to hit and a, um, a circle for my airstrike to hit. But I'm going to say when this says artillery, that means I take out the artillery. All right, that's my own interpretation of the rule. Maybe right, maybe wrong. Somebody can comment on it, whatever. Uh, but that's how I'm going to do that. When I can barrage, but I can't barrage here because he's not revealed. So we will move on from there. Uh, so this guy can't actually do anything. Uh, I could move him along, uh, but I can't get him up the beach right now anyway. So uh, we will just take these guys. Now I can do a move into here right but in doing so I have to draw a card and if that card has a purple on it then I have to take a unit from the uh, from the reserves and put them in here I can't remember it's a unit and a depth marker uh, enter unoccupied position and communication uh, draw a card uh, so you on the card, you take a unit from the reserve. Yeah, so no depth marker, just a unit from the reserve. And I'm sorry if you can't read my writing. I can barely read my own writing. So, uh, but uh, right here, um, if I enter an unoccupied position in communication, uh, if there's nothing in reserve, I can ignore it. Uh, but if the position group entering is on the card, then I have to draw a unit from the reserve. And then I can tuck infiltration fire, uh, and he may get hit. And then after that, I can close combat. So the question is, do I want to do that with these units? Uh, I can. I've got a flamethrower. I've got four, six. Uh, I can take the engineer, but he's not going to do me any good because it's uh, one card per three pips, per three steps, and then one for the flamethrower. Uh, so that would give me three cards coming in here against hopefully just one. Um, the engineer isn't going to do me any good, so I think I'm going to leave the engineer back. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and try to jump in here. I'm going to draw this and hope to God that I do not draw a purple. There it is. So that means I have to take a unit from the reserve for sector two, and I need to put it there. And then they will fire on me. And then I can close combat. Sweet. So, there we go. Hopefully not two purples in a row. Nice. Okay. So he misses. Now I can close combat. Which I think I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to jump in there and I'm going to close combat. I'm going to... Yeah, I'll resolve it immediately. Alright, so. This guy, of course. Of course. Of course. He's a CC. That's just the way it works. All right, so we are in C5. I'm gonna come down here so we can see the cards. All right, so Japanese get one for the unit and one for the CC. I get two for the pips and one for my flamethrower. Japanese goes first. He is not disrupted, so that means I have to get two hits on this dude. Uh, and if, ooh, why'd that CC come up? Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. All right, well, let's see how it plays out. All right, so Japanese go first. I do not want to see a purple. Purple. Crap. All right, so that means I take a hit and I lose a card. So... Now, when I lose a card, I don't like to look at it because I don't want to look and say, shoot, he took a hit away from me. So I'm just going to take this card and I'm going to put it back on top of my deck. Then I'm going to forget about it. All right, so I need to see a purple. Dang it. Now, I have this U.S. withdrawal hit. I don't withdraw from close combat. I just don't. So I'm not going to use that event. He goes, no purple. Sweet. 
I go. I got a purple. Uh, but CC heroism. Crap. Hello. I knocked my tripod over. That's good video making right there. Uh, I say crap because I do believe heroism is a bad thing for us. All right, so the close combat uh, events. Close combat events. Heroism. Add a card to the pile aside revealing this card. Oh, so it could be, wait, 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 that's me. Oh, I thought that was just Japanese. That's me. Add a card to the pile of the side revealing this card and remove a card, if any, from the pile of the other side. Drawn from the Japanese pile and Japanese unit has no depth marker, add a reveal depth marker. Well, it's a good thing it wasn't drawn by the Japanese, it was drawn by me. So, that's good because A, first of all, my first hit on this dude disrupts him. He has no more cards, but I now get another card because heroism. And look at that, I got a purple. Sweet. That worked out very well. So this dude is toast. And I can't remember, he's not elite. Uh, I can't remember turns one through six, whether I keep him or whether I toast him. So I'm gonna leave him here. I'm gonna check off camera. I'll deal with that later. All right, so these guys close combated and they are now in there. And this purple, even though it's in the same position, does not project field of fire into this position. All right, so we're in business to try to nail that guy. Oops, let me show you uh, to nail that guy next time. All right, this guy's disrupted. These guys can fire into here. All right, so we're gonna do that with, uh, yeah, with these jokers here. I'm gonna fire into here. Should I use these? No, I'll use this guy. All right. So I've got three, eleven, and I got a free engineer unit that I could use to jump in here. If it ends up being close combat, oh, I keep knocking that over. Uh, if it ends up being close combat, then I would have two because the engineer has a. No, I wouldn't, because Engineer only has two pips. So what do I do? What do I do? Ugh, I am not going to... Well, I can move in with these guys. Okay, that's what I can do. Or I can move in with the one guy. Mm. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to attack with this guy and with the Engineer below him. That is a total of 12 attack strength over a bluff. See that bluff, brown? That's what I'm gonna mess up a lot. But it's brown, I know that uh, brown means, uh, or bluff means, uh, bluff hex hide means US unit attack strength is halved into. So that means I have a six attack strength going into that area but I'm gonna do it anyway I'm gonna hit him with my six I hope I got enough to get rid of him I'm gonna hope it's not a close combat and then I'll try to move in with my HQ and with his buddy over here nice okay it is mortar I have that because I have a full strength unit that's got a mortar right right Full strength units have mortar, so good to go. All right, so this guy's only one strength, so he is toast. Again, I'll put him down here. I'll figure out what to do with him in a minute. Uh, but that means this guy and the engineer are used, and we are going to try to come in. Uh, let's do the HQ unit, and then I can choose to wait and bring these guys if necessary. Now I can't get that guy over the bluff, so my tank would be nice because he would give me lots more cards. But, all right, so we're gonna move that guy. I do not want to see a brown on this card. I did not see a brown on the card, so I get a free jump into there. Boom. 
All right. Now, this guy, I think I'm going to leave out for one reason and one reason only. He would get muff fire if I move into there. Oh, this is gone. He would get muff fire if I move into there from blue. So let's hold off on this guy moving in there and let's see if I can't take care of blue and then he won't draw fire by moving in there. So that's where leaving him that way and making everybody else diagonal lets me know I haven't used him yet and I can still move him in there if I need to. All right, so let me see where I am. I got 22 minutes left on this. I'm closing in on an hour. Um, so let's try to get through these last guys and then we'll wrap this first video up and see if anybody actually watches it. All right, so this guy is, let's see, I've got these two here, I got these guys here. It's going over a bluff, so it's gonna be halved. So if I do 11 from these guys, that's gonna be five and a half rounded up, will be six on that dude. Uh, more than likely, those are two strength units. So I'm gonna go for it and hope it's not a close combat. So these two here at uh, 11 strength have the six, I'm moving in on this guy. And it's a two, but he needs flanking. So therefore I am three to one, don't have the weapons, two to one, he's disrupted. So at the very least he's revealed and he's disrupted. So that is these guys. Oh, but you know what? By doing that, shoot, these guys are still disrupted. I can't take the disruption off of them. I can move these guys next turn. And then the disruption will come, because this disruption won't come off until next turn anyway. <sighs> oh well, it is what it is. All right, so these guys here have nothing to do but charge and try to get to that green. So. We're gonna do it. If I move this guy here, he's in steady fire of the black. That sucks. So I might not wanna do that yet. I might wanna take the green out before I start moving these dudes around. I hate to waste time, but you know, it is what it is. All right, so these guys can move here because there's not a bluff there. So if I move this whole stack right here. I got to take my fire. Right? Because I'm going from green field of fire to green field of fire. That's not good, but I got to get up there. And I got a green. That's a green tank. I don't think that matters because I'm not going to hit the tank anyway. This guy is, no, he hasn't been hit yet. He hasn't been hit, but he's also not a circle. But if I take it on the tank, that means the tank is toast. And the engineer's a circle. But I think, because it's intense field of fire, I have to take it on the highest, uh, yeah, I have to take it on the highest unit, and not the unit that has the symbol match. So, but on Muff, I don't believe they get disrupted. I'm gonna double check that on my little cheat sheets here. But I'm pretty sure on Muff, and they don't get disrupted. Uh, no, it doesn't say anything about not disrupting them. Well, that blows. All right, well, shoot. I'm gonna have to assume that this dude gets disrupted. Eh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. How the heck do you advance on these guys? I know, I know, Iwo Jima. It was not easy for them, so why should it be easy for me? But I feel like I'm gonna get torn apart if I try to move in. Now, I know Jeff Fike, when he was playing this game, he had a system of just moving his uh, HQ units in to attack him with the HQ units and reveal because he thought that HQ units couldn't get hit in intense fire. That is incorrect. Uh, HQ units and anything can get hit in intense field of fire. 
because intense field of fire can hit anything. So that's what makes this move dangerous. Is that now I got this whole stack of yokels. Oh wait, why do I have so many people? Oh, because he's got a step loss. All right, so that makes this dangerous. Because that means my tank can get hit, but my tank can get hit down here too. Ah, so I might as well move him. Might as well move him. Probably gonna lose a tank. What do you know? Um, but anyway, so yeah, HQ units can get hit. So that little strategy doesn't really work. Uh, and then these guys. Uh, I should move this guy. I should move these guys. I should. But if I do, we're in steady field of fire. Now I could play that trick and I could just move my HQ and then one of these dudes can become disrupt undisrupted next turn. Uh, because unless I draw a star, he's not going to hit him. <sighs> I got to play the game. I got to play it. They're going to advance. They advanced under fire on an island. I'm advancing under fire here. All right. But again, my fire. Shoot. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should wait. All right. What's undisrupted here? I got an HQ. I got an engineer. And I got a half strength tank. So that's gonna be three, four, five, nine strength moving into this guy. Uh, maybe I should wait. Maybe I should wait. Because it's one less fire. They're gonna get hit here anyway, right? So if they're gonna get here and hit here anyway. If I just move this guy. He's not gonna, uh, you know, he could still take the muff fire because it's intense and he would be the guy that takes it. So I don't want to move him along. Nope, 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 nope. I don't. If I take this guy, chances are he's gonna get popped. But if he, wait, 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 wait. If I move him in on intense fire and he's gonna get hit automatically anyway. See, that's just, that's no. No, 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 no. Well, that's just if I draw green. So it's a 50-50 shot of him getting hit. Uh, I do it. I do it. Screw it. I do it. All right, he's moving in. Cause I gotta. I mean, I can't just sit there on the beach and wait, right? I gotta get moving. All right. So I hope I don't get a green. I didn't get a green. Sweet. All right. So all that debating, minute minutes worth of debating, and nothing happened to him. All right. So I got them in position. Uh, all right, so back to these guys. This guy I didn't want to move because I didn't want him to take unnecessary fire. These guys are in position uh, to try to uh, hit that guy next turn. Although he took my fires, he get yeah, shoot, gets disrupted. Mm, but the good news there is I can at least use this guy to give me half strength because he's a um, two away. I could use these guys as well. And I can I can fire on that guy since I have someone next to him. <sighs> He's undisrupted, so if I draw a purple, my HQ might actually take a hit next turn, but we'll see. Alright, so I think that's all the all the things I want to do. I don't want to move anybody else right now. Uh may or may not be good strategy, but that's what we're gonna do. Alright. So that ends mine. Uh, Japanese artillery is the next phase, and that doesn't happen until game turn three. Raid phase doesn't happen until turn seven, and I'm not worried about that anyway. So now we're in turn. So we'll clean up, and uh, yeah, I'll clean up. I'll turn all my dudes back in order, uh, and then we'll start turn two. Oh, the one thing I did forget to do was place my dudes out. It doesn't matter because there's not a Japanese artillery phase, so I'll get I'll get my uh, my two guys in uh, and you know what yeah I did that wrong there's no turning back uh, my tanks my engineers were not supposed to land until what phase two guys were supposed to land after all the actions yeah so I used an engineer on one of these attacks over here it is what it is. It's done. I'm sorry. I screwed up, but that's okay. It's not a huge, huge, huge deal. So, all right. Well, there you go. There is my first ever uh, D-Day 
gameplay video. Um, hope you enjoyed it, the three of you that are going to watch it, <laughs> and uh, we'll catch you for video too.